Well, y'all, thank you for coming out. We'll tell you what we know. Uh, National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Robert Sumwalt is on his way here. We've been in communication for some time now. And, of course, they will conduct a thorough investigation, uh, as will others. But here's, here's what we can tell you. We've been to the scene. And uh, I would ask, this is a Sunday, everyone going to church, if you've been or you're not going, say a prayer for these people involved. We had 148 people on the train, 139 passengers, the eight Amtrak personnel, two of which have, um, have, uh, have been killed in the accident. That has been confirmed by the coroner, that is, two of the Amtrak personnel. Again, it's at 2.35 this morning on the line. This is the CSX line that is roughly uh, south, a little bit east of Columbia. Just so uh, it crosses under 321 headed to Charleston, Charleston Highway, which runs parallel to, to I-26 headed to Charleston. This is just a little bit south of where 77 joins I-26 to, to get right around Dixiana and Pine Ridge. But it's 2.35 this morning. The CSX train was was uh, on the, the track uh, uh, awaiting uh, later movement in the scheme. Of the, the CSX train, Amtrak, was headed south, coming from New England, headed to, we presume, Florida, and the collision, collision occurred. Um, 116 people have been taken uh, to local hospitals. Uh, some have very minor injuries, some are a little more serious. But uh, they are being cared for. And let me give you this number. Anybody who wants to find out about their loved ones or friends, the number to call, this is an Amtrak uh, uh, number. Of course, they have the details on who was on the train and so forth. It's 1-800-523-9101. I say again, 1-800-523-9101. And I'll say that again uh, as we as we proceed on. But we've had the, the whole emergency response team has been there, and that includes the South Carolina Emergency Management Division personnel, Office of Regulatory Staff personnel, the Fire Marshal, the Lexington County Sheriff, Sheriff Coon, Debbie Summers, the Chairman of County Council, David Kerr is the Director of Public Safety, uh, Senator Nikki Setzler, FBI, National Travel, Transportation Safety Board, as I mentioned, Robert Sumwalt, who, by the way, is a Columbia native, uh, is here, is close by, and will be here momentarily, and also uh, the Red Cross. And the uh, people who are the passengers are on the train are at the Pine Ridge, is that right, the Pine Ridge School, which is just uh, across the street here, and the Red Cross is there, and they've been feeding them breakfast and uh, taking care of them and trying to get in touch with with their relatives and to make uh, make people comfortable comfortable. Right now, when we were over there earlier this morning, there were probably about 35 passengers were, were there. Others had been, had left the scene. Others, of course, uh, had gone to the various, various hospitals uh, for their uh, mainly minor, minor injuries. But we'll keep you up to date as we go forward. And if you have any questions, we'll be try to, we'll try to answer them. And at this point, uh, Sheriff Coon. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Obviously, we've been on the scene since the early morning hours right after this collision. Um, we'll say our hearts goes out to all the families and everyone affected by this um, collision today, this tragedy this morning, especially the two lives that were lost. Um, the response was simply amazing. It was all hands on deck to get these folks off this, this train, all of the law enforcement. We received help from multiple um, city jurisdictions within the area and the highway patrol, um, of course, all the county public safety, everybody working together. Kind of where we are now, as the governor said, the passengers, the ones that got transported at local hospitals, the rest are across the street at the middle school working on reunification. Um, right now, the um, NTSB, which is standard on these type events, have requested the FBI to come in and help document the scene. They have, in turn, requested our state highway patrol's mate team, our reconstruction team. They're on the scene now starting that process. So we will have our deputies down there until that's completed. And that is kind of where we are on the law enforcement side of things. Harrison Cahill, our public information officer for the county, can um, brief you now on their response as far as um, fire and EMS. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Governor. 
Uh, like, he, like he said, my name is Harrison Cahill. I'm with the County of Lexington Public Information Office. That's H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N-C-A-H-I-L-L. -L. And I'm here to update you a little bit about the public safety side from the county. Uh, at this current time, we have uh, scaled back uh, our response to this incident. That's at fire and EMS. However, our EOC has still stood up and we are assisting in the recover recovery phase of this incident. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a timeline as to how this rolled out, uh, our county 911 received the call at 2.34 a.m. The first unit arrived on scene from the Lexington County Sheriff's Department at 2.39 a.m. The first EMS unit arrived on scene at 2.40 a.m. And the first fire unit arrived on scene at 2.42 a.m. That response time is indicative of seamless training, mutual aid agreements, all the partner agencies that you see behind me work together flawlessly to make sure that this incident comes to a satisfactory and successful finish. Um, of course, our hearts go out to the families that are affected and those that were involved. Um, nothing can be said that alleviates this for them, but we just want them to know that we're thinking of them and that we're with them in this. Uh, to give you an update on the amount of patients that we transferred, <clears throat> there were 116 patients transferred from the Lexington County EMS and other partner agencies to local hospitals. So before we previously reported that there were 70, that number is now 116. Um, just to reiterate what the governor said, if anyone is trying to get in contact with loved ones, find out where they are. We ask you to call the Amtrak info line. I'll give that number again. It's 1-800-523-9101. Again, 1-800-523-9101. Thank you. Anybody have questions? Governor, have you spoken with the president about this incident and what no, any assurances he gives you? No, ma'am. I've spoken to Mr. Sumwalt about it, who is the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. More questions? Can you tell us any details about how the derailment happened or how this accident happened? No, sir, that, that is being determined now, and the National Transportation Safety Board will answer those questions for you. The two people killed were both Amtrak personnel? Yes, said. sir. What, what were their jobs? Specifically? Do not know at this time. You said there were 140 passengers on the train, eight of those were employees or eight no, Oh, it's 148 total, and eight were employees. What was the brakes being involved in the collision? 147. Sir. Uh, what was the brake train hauling at the time of the collision? Does anyone have the answer to that? It, 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 looked, it looked empty to me. Governor, we went Governor at this time, we think the, the brake train was empty. Do you know where the freight train was headed from, Governor? Uh, no, sir, but it was it was pointed uh, north. And it was stationary. It was stationary. There are several tracks at that location. I believe there are three tracks there. Yeah, can someone here characterize how these tracks come together? Obviously, if we had one stationary and one this was by. this Our information, uh, subject to correction, is that this was not the main line. That is, this was a this was a, a loading track or a side track. Where the CSX train was stationary. Yes. At the time? Yes. Okay. And where the collision took place. Okay. Governor, but that that's subject to verification. Governor, can you uh, give us some details about your conversations with the survivors over across the street to middle school? What were their spirits like? Their their spirits were uh, un unusually unusually good. Uh, the Red Cross is. Uh, is a fabulous organization and as the sheriff said this was all hands on deck everybody is there uh, comforting those people helping them get in touch with their uh, loved ones trying to find their baggage a lot of their luggage has been removed but of course uh, uh, from from the baggage car which was the final car uh, on the on the Amtrak train which was was an engine six six cars and a baggage car and um, so the luggage that was in the baggage car has been removed. The luggage that is inside the, the, the other cars is, is uh, being removed now and will be, will be identified and sent back to those people. But they are, the Red Cross had uh, breakfast and coffee and uh, plenty of people in, uh, the, in the, the gymnasium there. The, 
spirits were under the circumstances were, were very good. When you went over to the, to the site of the wreck, how would you describe what you saw? Well, it's, uh, it's a horrible thing to see, to, to, to understand the force that's involved. I mean, two trains, that's about as forceful as, as you can get. The, the engine of the, uh, the first engine of the freight train, of course, was uh, torn up, and the, the single engine of the passenger train, the Amtrak train, which was headed south, was uh, barely recognizable. It's uh, quite, a, quite a crash, and it's, as you know, we take great pains to see that these kinds of things do not happen, but unfortunately they do from time to time. No one was on the CSX train. That is our information. That no one was on that train. Can you offer any clarity as to how fast the Amtrak train was traveling when this happened? I do not know. Uh, someone estimated around 59 miles an hour, I, but I do not know. I, Mr. Sumwalt, I'm confident, will have that information. And how many people are at Pine Ridge Middle School? There were uh, uh, the passengers. I counted about, thir I think, 32 but uh, uh, some had, had left, and some passengers had, had just gotten on in Columbia and had been picked up by loved ones or relatives or friends and had, had left the scene and had not gone to the school. But uh, we're putting all that information together and we have a precise count. Of course, Amtrak knows exactly who was on the train, and, and they are uh, studiously getting that information together. Can somebody from EMD or maybe another law enforcement agency talk about the training that we go through here in South Carolina for mass, ca mass casualty incidents? Um, what sort of preparation yes. y'all do? This is Kim Stinson. Yeah, Kim Stinson from, uh, from uh, State EMD. Uh, all disasters or emergency situations have a lot of common factors, and in this particular case, there's, there was uh, certainly emer emergency medical operations, transporting to, uh, to, uh, to hospitals, and in this particular case, reception center or sheltering operations. So we go through that on a routine basis. But specifically for this kind of event, many counties have training uh, on derailments uh, in, in South Carolina, and also the, uh, the rail companies also offer training as well. Uh, so that there's that connectivity that, that goes on in terms of, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, and we stay in very close contact with uh, the, the major uh, rail companies here in South Carolina, and they stay into a uh, looped into our emergency response system. Does that answer the question? Well, but how often does something like that come up? Is it an annual thing just to kind of touch it, it depends. Well, the overall plans are reviewed almost every year that, that handle the things like the emergency medical transport, the sheltering, uh, law enforcement requirements, and that sort of thing. And then it varies from locale to locale on how often that they do that. Uh, you know, obviously, probably the, the ones that are uh, more interested in are the ones that have actually rail lines going through that county. David Kirk, could you answer Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Uh, more details in there? From a county perspective, we go through this type of training very regularly. Um, another piece aspect of this response, of course, is hazardous material. Whenever you have a train derailment, uh, things of that nature, you always are concerned about hazardous material. We train on that um, regularly, uh, several times a year on uh, exercises. Um, so the team works very well together. And we do a lot of training to make sure that when it happens, CSX has come out and trained our dispatchers. They've come out and trained our personnel so that we know how to respond and communicate in this type of incident before. So, uh, so I would say we do a, a great deal of training to prepare for the, just such an incident. Obviously, when there is a train derailment in South Carolina, unfortunately, we all think back to Graniteville. This is clearly a different situation, thankfully, but what is the hazardous materials cleanup situation? We, we had approximately 5,000 gallons that leaked out of the uh, engines, okay? Gallons of, gallons of diesel. And uh, basically, there's about 3,500 gallons left in the tanks. So we have uh, DHEC in route to assist um, CXX, CSX and Amtrak in the recovery from the hazmat material, the leaked diesel. Basically, emergency response, we dam and dike it, and then we called in um, DHEC to come and do the full cleanup along with the company responsible for the material. Well, I think that the, the sheriff uh, pretty well covered that. This is a remarkable response, and, and you, you probably noticed 
from the hurricanes as well, the, the response of the, the people in our state in training as, as well as availability is just remarkable. So I would uh, I, I compliment and congratulate everyone on doing a, and thank them for doing a splendid, splendid job. Governor, a lot of people are asking how they can help in this time. What would you tell them? I would tell them one thing they can always do is give to the American Red Cross because they are always on the scene and the uh, there were a lot of Red Crosses visible on, on vests and clothing across the street and they were comforting those people who uh, none of them were planning on ending up in South Carolina. I think they were all going somewhere else. I know there's one, uh, one uh, woman there on the way to her husband's funeral, uh, for example. I mean, everybody's lives have been put on hold and disrupted. And uh, Red Cross, I would say, is probably about the best. Uh, that'd be the starting place. If you want to volunteer, if you want to give something, uh, that would be the place to go. Governor, obviously there are a lot of questions that remain to be answered, but do you imagine that this will prompt a renewed conversation about rail safety here in South Carolina? Yes, ma'am, I think so. I'm, I'm sure it'll prompt a renewed conversation around the country. We just, we, we cannot have these kinds of accidents. If we could go back to the collision, was the, was the Amtrak train on the wrong track? Was it switching tracks? What, what exactly was happening at, at the time of the collision? Do we, know yet? Uh, we, we don't know. I'll say it, it appears to me that the, 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 the CSX was on the, the, the track that it was supposed to be on. And that appears to be a, a loading track or a, a switch track. And it, it appeared that the CSX train was on the wrong track. But. So, sorry, the CSX train was on the wrong track? So, sorry, Amtrak was on the wrong. They weren't supposed to be meeting. Uh, right there by the bridge, clearly. Uh, and there may be a time factor, but it, that, that's what it appears to me. But I, I defer to those who, who uh, are experts in that and, and do have the correct information. But it appears that Amtrak was on the wrong track. The uh, estimate of the timeline uh, for the investigation. We'll know more about that when Mr. Sumwalt arrives, but I'm sure it'll be very thorough. Well, they'll determine the time it happened. They'll try to determine why it happened. They'll try to determine what instrumentalities or what equipment or what electronics were, uh, were deficient or at fault or on the blink or if there was human error, if and, and if so, uh, why and uh, where were the trains supposed to be at, at which time. In the railroad business, you, you only have a few tracks, and, and so your, your trains have to be monitored very, very closely. So. Uh, we, those are the kinds of things that they will determine. Y'all, one more thing. Let me give that number again. It is 1-800-523-9101. Anyone looking for a friend, loved one, call that number. That is the Amtrak line for this occasion, 1-800-523-9101. And we thank you very much.